The Porsche Taycan is quite a divisive car, a marmite car as some Brits might call it. Y you either love it or you hate it. It's been teased by Porsche for more than two years, first making its appearance as the Porsche Mission E concept car, and until its recent reveal last month, and actually sometimes beyond it, has been treated by many as vaporware or a vague promise. But naysayers have been proven wrong. The Taycan is now a real car and it's heading into production. And last week, Porsche confirmed that it will be increasing its planned production volume beyond the original 20,000 units per year it had planned because people really want it. While it hasn't exactly detailed the increase in production, Porsche said last week that it's expanded its workforce by adding 500 new positions at the Taycan production facility. This brings the total number of people working on Porsche's first plug-in electric sports car to 2,000. And that, I think, is not only good for Porsche, but it's also good for the auto industry as a whole. And here's why. More cars mean more choice, more choice means more people will make the switch to electric, and more companies working on and delivering electric vehicle drivetrains will help lower the cost for everyone. Right now, there's one player in the electric car marketplace that we in the industry, and sometimes outside of it, tend to focus on. Tesla. And that's because without Tesla, the industry wouldn't be where it is today. Tesla's Model S, Model X, Model 3, original Roadster, and upcoming pickup second generation Roadster and Semi are all lauded as examples of Tesla's expertise and prowess in the industry. The battery technology and the drivetrain, the, the high tech over the air updates, the autopilot functionality, I could go on. But those who compare the Porsche Taycan to a Tesla and complain it's not able to beat or even meet Tesla's market position are completely missing the point because while there's been some healthy competition on the track between both companies, as they each try and set new records for electric car lap times at the Nürburgring, they really aren't cars that are meant to compete or compare with one another. I've said that before. And for the most part, people who find Tesla's appealing are going to go for a Tesla. People who find Porsches more appealing are more likely, if they can afford it, to go for a Taycan. Up to this point, sadly, those who have criticised the Taycan for not having the same range of performance as a Tesla are the very people who haven't driven the Taycan, or in some cases, I suspect, a Tesla. Those who have driven both the Taycan and a Tesla have for the most part been incredibly complimentary about the Taycan and acknowledge that it's very different to Tesla's offering. And that's not to say that the Taycan is better than a Tesla because it's not. It's that it's a different car with a different market and both brands can and should coexist. Look, as the folks at Green Car Reports noted in their first drive review, quote, it's a rival for the Tesla Model S in the same way that they're both cars with four wheels, five if you count the steering wheel. Beyond these, the Taycan and Model S share fewer similarities than the surface of the sun and a grilled cheese sandwich. The Taycan is not a luxury, long distance, spacious, cabined car capable one day of driving itself. That's the Model S. The Taycan is to all intents and purposes an electric sports car that can just about squeeze four, maybe five people inside, and is built for driving hard all of the time. And like the rest of the Porsche lineup, this car isn't cheap. At anywhere from between one and a half to two times the cost of your standard Tesla Model S, the Porsche Taycan Turbo and Turbo S, yeah, let's forget about the use of the word turbo here, are just as likely to be daily drivers as they are members of an extensive luxury fleet that spend most of their time at the garage. But that's okay because the kind of person who can afford that kind of price tag is likely someone who, up to this point, hasn't really looked at electric cars twice. And as several reviewers have noted, this is a Porsche first and foremost with the high level of fit and finish and high-end performance of a Porsche. It just happens to be a Porsche with an electric drivetrain. It's a car which isn't trying to change the world. That's something we should leave to Tesla. It's a car that subverts stereotypical expectations of electric cars and packages it in a familiar exterior that keeps existing petrol heads and Porsche fans happy. And if this becomes the first high-end plug-in car for someone who wouldn't look twice at a Tesla, 
then I'm all for it because it means we're getting more people plugging in. It's a common theme on this channel that not everyone has the same needs and desires, and I'm super happy to see such variety finally, after a long wait, come to the plug-in marketplace. As for the good for everyone thing, well, that's pretty simple. Porsche is part of the Volkswagen Group. Everything it does will eventually seep through into other Volkswagen Group cars. And like I've said, the more car choices people have, the more people will dump the pump and go electric because we're all different. You can complain that the Taycan is not a Tesla, moan about how nobody will buy it, and complain that Porsche is out of touch with what people want or need in an electric car. Or you can look at the increased production and be glad that, while initially dragged kicking and screaming, making its dieselgate errors, mainstream automakers are finally getting it by hook or by crook. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon, feed our coffee habit with Kofi, or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, Keep evolving!